Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report for today. It's Monday, May 20th, 2013. I'm Darko. All right, I'm ready to go. These are some uh, leftover articles that I have. Actually, I was going to start uh, behind in Asia. South Korea deploys Israeli missiles to protect border islands. South Korea's place Israeli precision guided missiles capable of striking uh, North Korea and their artillery. Uh, it says here on, on its Yellow Sea border islands. China deploys uh, these Su-27 fighters in Tibet can target key uh, Indian air bases. They say here China's all-weather fighter base in Tibet is now widening its range of options in the event of a conflict with India. It says intelligence uh, and satellite monitoring has confirmed that China may have uh, to some extent overcome Tibet's extreme altitude and temperatures to uh, basically operate an all-weather airfield in the Tibet capital. North Korea fires sixth missile in three days so they were short-range missiles making six launches in three days it says here and it condemned South Korea for criticizing what it said were its legitimate military drills uh, this comes right after um, this right here Japan's secret trip to North Korea disrupts United stance against Pyongyang Japan's visit to North Korea comes after broad regional agreement that Pyongyang should not be offered talks unless it displays a genuine commitment to denuclearization says here the, that South Korea said that um, they don't think that the visit to North Korea was helpful. China now spends $125 billion per year on riot gear and stability maintenance. Mannequins and riot gear, armored cars and drones line of police equipment, and anti-terrorism technology trade fair in Beijing. As vendors seek to profit from China's huge internal security budget, Countries estimated to have more than 180,000 protests each year, and the ruling Communist Party spends vast sums of ensuring order, more even than on its military, the largest in the world. U.S. prepares to overthrow a Malaysian government. The key to encircling and containing China, U.S. sets proxies in motion for color revolution in the Malaysian streets. U.S. proxy Anwar Ibrahim leads a bearish rally in Malaysia. While bearish has attempted to claim it is independent and simply pursuing fair and clean elections, elections. It is clearly a vehicle for returning Abraham back into power. Additionally, Barish shares the same ties to the U.S. State Department's National Endowment for Democracy. As its crypto leader, Anwar Abraham represents a dangerous and seditious conflict of interest. And then uh, switching gears here to Libya in the Middle East. Um, we were talking about um, Salafis and that in the first video. West dividing Libya through Al-Qaeda, says analysts. Libya is on the brink of disintegration under a scenario orchestrated by the West and implemented by Al-Qaeda. says, we don't really have a sovereign country anymore. We're looking at the destruction of a nation and control by Al-Qaeda and Al-Qaeda-related forces, says Mr. Freeman of the Executive Intelligence Review. says, the destruction of the nation of Libya is designed to carry out policy of chaos and death across northern Africa. Of course, pave the way for global corporations to come in, right? Algeria, Middle East is next revolt if soccer is a barometer. Algeria is competing to be the next Arab nation to witness a popular revolt. Says that is assuming soccer is a barometer of rising discontent in the region, experiencing a wave of protests that have already toppled leaders of Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, Yemen, and sparked, quote, civil war in Syria. That's, I guess that's what we call it. Says now in circumstances similar to Saudi Arabia, protests are mounting amid uncertainty about the future of Algeria's aging leadership and it struggles with a series of natural deaths and the effects of health problems among its remaining key leaders. Soccer fans earlier this month uh, demonstrated a disdain for their 76-year-old president who's recovering from a stroke. Similarly, fans interrupted a moment of silence in the stadium to commemorate the death of a former leader by chanting, uh, Buta Flicka is next. A former Algeria intelligence service officer and uh, political analyst said if there's not a real democratic transition, there will be an uprising. We will return to the violence of the 1990s. 6,000 Algerian soldiers stationed on Tunisian border from the 16th of May. The Algerian army has deployed over 6,000 soldiers on its borders with Tunisia in order to deal with the potential infiltration of armed Salafi groups. There you go. It says, the past few weeks we have witnessed clashes between the Tunisian army and two groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda. So, and uh, this all has to do, um, uh, too, this will affect Mali. So, Tunisia, Salafist group involved in terrorism. Prime Minister of Tunisia says Salafist group, uh, Al-Sharia, uh, is involved in terrorism after supporters clashed with security forces in the capital. He added that the group 
has ties to it and is involved in terrorism. U.S. Saudi-backed al-Qaeda proxy cells now waging jihad against Russia. Saudi's Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia's Salafi jihadists, the Islamic militants referred to it as al-Qaeda by the corporate media, are now waging jihadist operations against Russia. This is from last September 2012. The U.S. funded uh, Salafi extremists continue to wage war against Syria under the cover of Western media propaganda, referring to them as peaceful actors fighting corruption, justice, and civil war, right? says, as the operation nears the end game, uh, the Saudi terror cells are also being set up in Lebanon and Algeria. Now, with most northern Africa and Middle East uh, countries conquered, the terror horde is being aimed at Russia. So this is important uh, because of what's going on now with Russia. Um, of course, after the Boston bombings linking the Tsarnaev brothers to Dagestan and uh, basically a Chechen rebels. So FSB, they're, uh, basically Russia's Federal Security Service, prevents terror act in Moscow by militants trained in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Information about their possible involvement in the Islamic movement of Uzbekistan is being checked. Moreover, special forces are trying to find out if there were contacts and connection connections with militants among Moscow region residents. Car bomb explosion kills four, injures 46 in Dagestan, southern Russia. It was a blast that struck outside the headquarters of the court bailiff service in the capital. So going back to what we were talking about with Algeria, if Algeria does go and fall into a destabilization period, it will affect Mali. And right now, uh, French, the French are actually um, uh, basically announcing victory and they're supposedly sitting down or going to sit down with the Turk rebels. These are the people that were kind of uh, um, there. Uh, I think it was, I believe it was in uh, northern Mali. They just want their own autonomous re uh, area or nation. They won't get it, but um, they're basically they're less extreme and radical than the, than the Al-Qaeda groups that were there before. But it says here, Turkish, uh, Turks separatist rebels who held a chunk of Mali's vast north and still occupy a key town are ready for talks in the West African country's crisis. So, you know, if they're doing all this help, why don't they just let them have their damn land, you know what I mean? But they won't. They won't do it. Because, then, of course, then, then the French will be fighting those people when they try to come in and take their resources. The U.S. after sectarian divisions in Iraq, the press TV has conducted an interview uh, with this director for the Center for Muslim Affairs. And he goes on, he says... I wrote about this many years ago. They actually had a map long before they invaded Iraq in which Iraq is divided into a Sunni state, a Shia state, and a Kurd state. I call this the balkanization of the Muslim world. They lit the fires of sectarianism. When you light the fires of that uh, sectarianism, killing a few people, blowing up a few mosques, mosques, it says here and there, it takes on a life of its own. It breeds hatred, and you know... When you reinforce and create political structures which empower one group and disempower the other, the sectarianism is inevitable. Speaking of which, Monday mayhem, 133 killed, 283 wounded in Iraq. Coordinated bombing attacks resumed today and at least 10 blasts were seen in the capital alone. So both Sunni and Shiite targeted them, uh, were targeted in them. Overall, 133 people, 283 were wounded, but figures are likely to rise. Some of the dead and wounded were Iranian pilgrims. Pakistan army will be watching Sharif's cozying up to India. Pakistan's all-powerful military overthrew Nawaz Sharif 14 years ago and hustled him off into exile in handcuffs. Now he's back as prime minister-elect, but the army watching his every move, especially a step's plan to ease tensions with arch-rival India. It's kind of a big deal. Because I just remember seeing an article I was going to include in here, but it basically is Karzai of Afghanistan meeting, um, having talks with India as well, so... Then you have Pakistan officials, army no threat to new government, multi-hour talks, a good omen, insist officials. So the officials from Pakistani Muslim League, the incoming government after last week's election, have expressed optimism after a multi-hour meeting between the army chief and incoming prime minister. So although they have a long-time rivalry, uh, they said here that the military doesn't pose a threat to the civilian government and Sharif isn't necessarily going to be deposed uh, military as he was in the last two times he held the post. World growing less tolerant of Muslims and Jews, says the report. State Department says anti-Semitic and anti-Islamic sentiments are growing. Um, so it says according to new U.S. State Department reports. So he says Egypt, Venezuela, and Iran in particular are singled out for anti-Semitism. So it says in Egypt, uh, the media engages in Holocaust denial and glorification while the Iranian government regularly denounces Judaism. 
which is just a bunch of shit. Because I've, I've seen uh, videos, I've seen reports. Um, Iran actually has one of the highest um, uh, uh, population of Jews. So even well into the 21st century, they say traditional forms of anti-Semitism, such as conspiracy theories, which that means that it's not true. No, actually Jews have been kicked out of countries for a long time, one after another for hundreds of years. Uh, use of the discredited myth of blood libel and cartoons demonizing Jews continue to flourish, the report says. So this doesn't just come from anywhere. This comes from her for a reason, because people, um, you know, they say they want someone to blame. Well, uh, you just have to open up your eyes and you can, you can see uh, people in the top posts and banks, uh, the financial industry, energy industry, uh, politics, Anti-Defamation League, uh, the ACLU, and I don't think that they're the cause of all the world's problems. I just think that they're a very small minority group that needs to piggyback and use uh, and pit other uh, religions and peoples against each other so that they can gain political control and global world domination. So everyone, I'd like to see a report that says that the world's growing less tolerant of, um, of basically Anglo-European, Scandinavian people and Christians. Church of Scotland report challenging Jews' divine right to Palestinian homeland is says it's unchanged. The Church of Scotland's revised report, The Inheritance of Abraham, has now been released ahead of their assembly. Going back to this real quick, though, a good point is, is it's pretty nuts, though. I mean, when you think about it, what is it, uh, all these religions, all three of them, tie to Abraham, and it just makes me wonder if, if they were created um, by a single entity to pit people against each other to be able to use it for mind control to control large amounts of people. So it says the church felt obliged to change some of it after Jewish leaders sought to interfere. It says one complaint that is an outrage to everyone that interfaith dialogue stands for. Another said it reads like an Inquisition era polemic against Jews and Judaism. So I mentioned this before. They were, they've been kicked out of um, most of the countries that they've been in for hundreds of years. It's not because people just hate them because they hate them. It's because of a result of an action which is like to bed ourselves into countries and say, hey, we're German, hey, we're American, hey, we're Russian. And through the usury system, they basically enslave people. The Israeli ambassador moaned that it belittled the deeply held Jewish attachment to the land of Israel in a way that was truly hurtful. The report's key conclusion remains that the Church of Scotland does not agree with the premise that scripture offers any peoples a divine right to territory, but they also say Israel is a recognized state and has a right to exist in peace and security. Uh, but there's many people that believe that um, uh, that the Jews that call themselves Jews are not the Jews of the Bible. And you have something like this. New genetic research confirms Kessler's Khazar theory. Ashkenazi Jews are not the Jews of the Bible.